Rich snippets. Let's check it out. So a rich snippet is markup that we'll use that identifies individual pieces of your content that's used over and over again throughout the site. And ideally, we'd be able to implement this dynamically like I did here on this site that I used to work with. This is TomBerfo.com. And you can see that not every site works here, but most of them have color. And the color in the listing, this is identified from rich snippets. So most dynamic in-the-box places only really show rating and the rating review count, where I forced it to also show price. And in my mind, that is a very powerful tool because oftentimes people want to know that you can actually buy things here. And by seeing a price, they can get their information given to them way quicker. So in this case, we provided reviews. I aggregated the ratings of 4.8 stars across the 463 reviews on this category. This is a category level. And then we showed what the minimum price product was and the maximum price product in that range of those categories. So every product in the category has a potential to have a rating and a potential low and high price. And I believe I only use starting prices. So this is the starting price ranges. And here we go. Another example of this would be um, another product that shows a picture. This one didn't happen to show a price, but it does show a picture. So you can see rich snippets. If we can include the featured image within a rich snippet, and that's something that you guys definitely have, that would be something that we could dynamically implement and have color in our listing and immediately have a difference when people are searching through out. And I know that in some cases we're willing to show prices. So if we were showing prices, that would really be a game changer because a lot of people obscurely hide their price and then no one can see the price. So if we were just being upfront and saying, this is what it costs, you know, starting at this price, we don't have to show the whole range unless you wanted to, that'd be a good way to go. So I'll show you an example of rich snippets in a moment, but this is a rich snippets from schema.org slash events. And I'll, I'll provide you the notes here in a moment when you get this video. And I chose events because I think that'd be pertinent for a lot of what you guys are doing. Um, so this is just food for thought in the future. As you guys are doing events, you can hold everything from aggregate ratings, who's the attendee, who's the composer, what's the audience, when the door is open, how long, what's the end date, the start date, the location, the, the current um, you know, time zone, if it's Eastern time or Western time. You can provide images and just a whole slew of information. So I encourage you guys to look at this. And I like JSON. You can do it as markup where it's in the microdata. You know, item prop equals duration content equals item prop equals thumbnail content equals, you know, and then the thumbnail uh, address of the image. But I'm a fan of JSON. I just know it's strong and it works and it's not fussy. So here are my notes. You can see this is, and you can go to any homepage. Uh, that is any website that's using rich snippets, right click, inspect, search for the schema.org um, and you will see that they have schema and you can just take what they're using and use it as an example. So if you like how something's showing up, just take it. Um, in this case, this is at the home level. So I'm using just the name of the website, the brand of the website. I show an image that we thought would be appropriate to showcase for the website itself. And then um, the name again of the brand. So the aggregate rating, type aggregate rating, rating value, 4.7 stars, rating count out of 2,559 rating reviews. Here's um, another thing that we tried on the homepage that didn't work out so well. I mean, it, it's not failed. It passed, the, uh, it passed the JSON test, but Google just never ended up implementing it. This attempt was to show Google how to search. Here's my website. And here's the URL, and there's a potential action for search, type search. And here's the target URL for searching. So if you put in this query here, this you know get variable, that's where you put in your search string. And the idea there was Google is trying to keep people on their homepage. So that's something that we could look toward in the future. But I encourage at least starting with um, at the base level, putting in an image and saying what the name of the product is and what the brand is. So this is what we use at category level here. This shows, again, the schema, the type is product, because we're using products in this case. And you could use products for you know, all of the vertical pages on Microsoft, JCC, YMCA, all of them. Uh, so that would say YMCA. And this would be a picture, maybe the featured image of that vertical page. It's a thing. What's the thing? This is YMCA you know, membership software. Aggregate rating, if you had ratings, that would be fantastic because those will show up as color on the listing. So I encourage us to figure out 
how to start collecting reviews and or, or stuffing them into the system from third-party review uh, software if you are collecting reviews somewhere else um, so that you guys could use them either with an API or directly. In this case, there was a review system built right in that I created and then I just aggregated the review accounts right from there. And then we have offers. So we have, that's just how you could show your aggregate offer, low price, high price. If you wanted to do both low price and high price, that'd be a decent thing to show. You can always just do a single offer and just show low price. And I'll show you an example of that. So here's a product page. We show the markup. We show a product name, short description, image, aggregate reviews, and only the starting price. And in this case, we're showing a vendor name because we sell third-party vendors on this site. So product name, description. This one does not have an image. It's blank. The image would go right here, right? And you can actually have multiple images with commas separating them as you would with any JSON um, array. And here you go, description. And then we have the short description. MPN number is like the barcode. So I just use the absolute identifier for that product ID in that case. Um, you can have a brand. So the, the, it's a thing. Obviously, we're doing things. These aren't events. This is a product. So the product. And then it's a brand, which is a thing, and it is well, we, it's snorkeling tours in this case. And then here's, again, aggregate rating, count, review, stars, and count, how many made up that. And then here we have offer. And I did type offer. What's the price? It is price currency US dollars. And then I only showed a single price. And you can even show a valid through. That way, if you think we're changing pricing all the time, uh, you could update the valid through price. So say you wanted it to only hold for like six months after you put in the price, then you would just update that dynamically, right? And when was the last update? Plus six months. That's up to you guys as programmers. And then item condition, we say new condition, and this is a schema. You gotta use schema's conditions. You can't just say whatever you want, right? So again, looking through the documentation, you'll know what you can use. Availability, item schema in stock. And then the seller, in this case, is a third-party seller type organization named Accountable Charters. So, and down here in the notes, I have an example of an event. So here's the schema type event. What's the name of the event? What's the sponsor? There's a sponsor. This is a type organization. That's the name of the sponsor, the website. When does the event start? What are the offers? Here's the URL where you can purchase or register to the event. Here's where it's valid through. So this is the valid form is valid through this time and date. And this is the price, it's in US dollars. This is um, where you can go to find the actual offer, the valid form again, and here's another price. So they have two different offers. They're on the same exact page. There's just two different prices that they show. Um, and then actually there's three, there's three prices that they show all on the same page. Their event description, location information. So this is a type place. Where is it? So they have city, state. This is the uh, location of the URL where you can learn about it. This is the postal type now where we're going to show the locality being the city and state again. So they just double down on that in two different ways. And then this actually has a map, and then they show where you can find the map. This is a picture. They actually inject a picture of the map in the PNG. So that's there's all kinds of powerful things that we can do. Um, and I think you could utilize that within your JCCs. The only thing or YMCAs or anyone that you want to work with, the way I'd see it is when they're creating an event, you just have to have that broken down into its micro pieces, which I believe you already do. And if that's the case, you can dynamically assign micro data to it. The place where I would start are the places where you already have the data. So, you know, featured images, every single blog, every single vertical page, every single page already has a featured image. You could easily put that in there. If there are star counts, you could have the star count and just have an if statement. If there are no stars and no reviews, just don't show that piece of code. And then when you start collecting stars, it'll dynamically just start broadcasting it. Same thing with the category name or the name of the company, or if it's an event, the name of the organizers, the name of the um, any of those uh, fields that you want to use. So I would encourage that use, and I hope this was informative. Thanks.